So starting on workbook page 580, today we're going to be talking about functions. So a function is a relation that assigns exactly one output value to one input value. The function rule describes the relationship between each input and output. So the function rule is kind of like an expression that represents the function. You can organize the input and output values and the function rule in a function table. In a function, the input value is also known as the independent variable, since it can be any number you choose. The value of the output depends upon the input, so the output value is known as the dependent variable, because the output is dependent on the input. So the output is the dependent variable. So we're going to scroll to the bottom, and we're going to complete parts A and B together. So we want to complete these function tables. So we are given the inputs. This is the function rule, and we want to find the outputs. So if our first input is 4, we're going to plug that input in for the function rule and solve to find the output. So the input of 4 into the function rule would be 4 minus 4, and that gives us an output of 0. The next input is 7. If we put that into the equation, 7 minus 4, that gives us an output of 3. Our last input is 10. Put 10 into the function rule, 10 minus 4, that gives us an output of 6. So our outputs are 0, 3, and 6. Part B, we have new inputs and a new function rule. We want to find the outputs. So our first input is 0. So put that into the function rule, 3 times 0. That gives us an output of 0. 2, put that in for the function rule, 3 times 2. And that gives us an output of 6. Put 5 into the function rule, 3 times 5, we get an output of 15. So these are our outputs. Now we're on workbook page 581, the next page, and we're going to do problems C and D. So notice for problem C, this one's different because we have our outputs and our function rule, but we don't have the inputs. So for this one, we need to work backwards by doing inverse operations. So we're going to take our function rule and set it equal to each output and use inverse operations to find the input. So for letter C, our function rule is 2x minus 1. So we're going to set it equal to our first output, which is 1. So set that equal to 1. We're going to do inverse operations to find our input. So first we add 1 to both sides. These cancel out. So we're left with 2x equals 1 plus 1 is 2. Next, the inverse here would be to divide by 2. These cancel out. x equals 1. So when we have an output of 1, we get an input of 1. Now we're going to plug it in for the function rule in the middle and check. 2 times 1 minus 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. So that works. So that input's correct. Let's do the next one. Now we have 2x minus 1, same function rule, but this time we're going to set it equal to the next output, which is 3. Solve using inverse operations. So first, get rid of addition or subtraction. Those are going to cancel out. We have 2x equals 4 plus 1. I'm sorry, 3 plus 1 is 4. Next, we're going to divide. Those cancel out. x equals 2. So our next output, I'm sorry, our next input is 2. So 2 times 2 minus 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So that's correct. Last one, our output is 5. So we have 2x minus 1 equals 5. So first we're going to add 1 to both sides. So we have 2x equals 6. 
Then we're going to divide by 2. Those cancel out. X equals 3. So our last input is 3. So 2 times 3 minus 1. 2 times 3 is 6. Minus 1 is 5. Now let's go on to letter D. So we have a new function rule, 3x plus 2. And we're going to set that equal to each, in each output. So our first output is 17. So let's do inverse operations, subtract 2. We have 3x equals 15. Divide by 3, x equals 5. So our first input is 5. 3 times 5 plus 2. So 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17. Let's do our next output, 20. 3x plus 2 equals 20. Subtract 2. We're left with 3x equals 18. Divide by 3. x equals 6. So 3 times 6 plus 2. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. Last one, 3x plus 2 equals 29. Subtract 2. Those cancel. We have 3x equals 27. Divide by 3, x equals 9. So 3 times 9 is 27, plus 2 is 29. So don't always assume that your last input is just going to go in order. Because if you would have assumed that it's going to be, you saw 5 and 6, you might have assumed that this was going to be 7, but it's actually 9. So make sure to always do out the steps to make sure that you're getting the correct answers. So these are the inputs for these function tables. Okay, last problem is on the top of workbook page 582. So on the next page, we're just going to do letter E. This says, Brianna bikes 12 miles per hour. The function rule that represents this situation is 12x, where x is the number of hours. Make a table to find how many hours she has biked when she's gone 12, 36, and 48 miles then graph the function. So notice that this says x represents the number of hours and we want to make a table to find how many hours. So if x is hours and the problem says we're trying to find how many hours, then we must not know the inputs. So that means that the outputs must represent the other unit of the problem, which is miles. So it says that she's traveled 12, 36, and 48 miles. We want to find how many hours she's biked. So we're going to take our function rule, set it equal to each output. So 12x equals 12, divide by 12 to both sides. x equals 1 is our first input. 12 times 1 equals 12. Next output is 36, so 12x equals 36, divide both sides by 12, x equals 3, so our next input is 3, 12 times 3 is 36, last output is 48, so 12x equals 48, divide by 12, x equals 4, so 12 times 4 equals 48. Okay, so now that we've completed the table, we just have to graph this. So every input represents x and every output represents y. And remember, ordered pairs are always x comma y. So we have to use 1 comma 12, 3 comma 36, and 4 comma 48 as our ordered pairs. So we have 1, 12, 3, 36, and 448 as our ordered pairs from the table. So first we're going to graph 112. So we start at the origin. We go 1 to the right, 
up 12. So I'm just going to go kind of in the middle there. Next is 336. Start at the origin. 3 to the right, up 36. So right here. Okay, last one is 448. So start at the origin, 4 to the right, up to 48. So somewhere up here. And we're just going to kind of connect that. And your graph should look something like that. So this is how you do function tables and function graphs.